Hey guys, Richard Official Auto Channel and Reefs.com. How you guys doing today? I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today is like a vlog of sort, and I just wanted to take you behind the scene and show you guys what I do on my day off with a whole bunch of fish stuff that's going around. Fish shenanigans, basically. Uh, first on the agenda is to visit one of my good friends, Julian Sprung of Two Little Fishies. Two weeks ago, I saw one of my good friends from Indonesia, Calvin Krog. He posted something of Bangai Cardinals being captive raised and aquacultured in his facility. Well, not his facility in general, but he's been supporting this movement called Lini in Indonesia and it's been helping the local fish villages and such to raise uh, Bangai Cardinals so we could be a little bit more conscious of some of the uh, fish that, that we take for granted in the stateside. So we wanted to support that so I got in contact with him and I got my hands on a few of the fish. I went to pick it up at the airport and I got a few for myself and a few for my good friend Julian Sprung. He's gonna put them in his pond. So he already has a few in there but he wants to have a different genetic diversity and have just a healthy amount of them floating over the, uh, all over his pond. So first thing we're gonna do that. So follow me and this is my day. I got my blue shirt on. Uh, that matches. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know what's in the background. No, no, it's okay. It's no. just it's just you and the you yeah. and the fish. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for the frags, Julian. I really appreciate it. Alright guys, so this is my second stop of the day. I'm here to visit my good friend Harry Singer. Harry's right over there <laughs> Hello. and we're gonna show you what we're doing here today so i came to harry because i had some issues with temperature rising in my tank and i saw something that he was working on that he showed off on facebook and i immediately jumped on it because i thought it was so cool harry what you got there so this is one of my newest ideas slash products mm -hmm. that it's basically a cooling system for your tank yeah so it can clamp onto the side mm -hmm. and what makes it unique is that it's powered by the apex 24 volt accessory port so you don't use that like that precious port <laughs> right, <laughs> the power plug full, right you don't need a full outlet and mm -hmm. you can even so it uses a waterproof ip67 noctua computer fans okay so it's a great brand and then you can even run multiple on one 24 volt port with little splitters. But just a single one for mm -hmm. this Reaper 350, yeah. it used to peak at like 82 and a half degrees. Yeah. And now it's like 79 and it's a wall. You know, the fan turns on and it doesn't go a degree above that. Gotcha, gotcha. And then these, um, how many, you, I mean, for me, I ordered two from you, uh, from you, and then you said that I could daisy chain them together and put it together to a one, one port, right? Yeah, you know, so the, the one I made for you, it right. has a little splitter. Yes. So you can power both of these. Mm -hmm. But you know, for me, if I leave one of these on, let's say if I leave the outlet to on, yeah. it will overpower my heater and the tank you see goes 77, 76, 75. Wow. You know, these are like remarkably powerful. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And I see that you have a various different colors here. What, what's, what's, how many different colors you, you could put it like this? Well, because it's 3D printing, I can do pretty much any color upon request, yeah. which is really nice. I have a little messy farm over here going, <laughs> but my favorites, I think is black. Yeah. Just cause it looks the most sleek yeah. and it has, you know, a finger cover. Yeah. So I learned the hard way that it needs to be covered. These are strong right, right. fans. Yeah. You know, one thing that I really liked about it is like you showed me earlier how it connects everything together. Can you show me that real quick? Yeah, so this is actually like virtually impossible to print in one piece. Mm -hmm. So it's two halves. They're yeah. mostly symmetrical. Yeah. And it uses stainless hardware to clamp them together with a few locating features. Okay. So that improved the print time by like, you know, 75%. Wow. To get this going. Gotcha. And then because it is clamping together, there's no air leakage yep. coming from the, the sides into the joints and such. Yeah, it overlaps. And then there's even like several small features. Like for example, here there's a little slot mm -hmm. that goes all the way across. Yeah. So if the water ever starts hitting this, right. it won't sublimate oh, this surface okay, okay, okay. because gotcha. it has a slot that goes all the way across. 
Gotcha. And it can be made customized to any glass thickness. Right. Mine is one half inch. Yours is going to be three quarter inch. Right. And yeah, pretty cool. That's awesome. And so if they want to purchase this from you, how do they contact you? Um, on my Instagram, Harry's Aquatics. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, I'm Harry Singer there. Okay. And you'll always find me in like the Net official Neptune group, the Ask BRS TV group. Awesome. And I also have this posted on Thingiverse, so it's a totally open source project. If you have a 3D printer or have a friend that's a 3D printer, they can just, a friend that's a 3D printer, a friend that has a 3D printer, you can just download this file and print it out yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, some stainless hardware, the appropriate fan, and you're all set to go, no charge. Well, thank you, Harry. I'm excited to put this in my system. Thank you for all the good work. And I'm looking forward to more innovation from you in the future. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys. So this is the last part of my day. I'm with my good friend over there with Isander and Javier the Cuban Reaper. Uh, this is our, my good friends from my local reef club called Florida Marine Aquarium Society. And we're getting together to install the country's first X-Series from Reef Bryce. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on, on one before they hit the market and Tulio has promised some really amazing promises uh, regards to this light, how it's going to spread everything evenly and I'm going to test that on my system. I'm going to install the system here on, to supplement it with my Radions and go from there and let's check it out how it goes. This is the mounting bracket that is going to hold both lights yeah. together on the back and the front. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. This has been a day in aficionado land, uh, behind the scene vlog of sort. It's been a long day, but it's been very rewarding. I needed a day like this where I could just sit back, relax with fellow reefers, like-minded hobbyists that just has much love for this hobby, geek out on fish, corals, as well as just some time to work on my tank, just to just de-stress a little bit. Throughout this whole pandemic, it's been rough on multiple people, like you know, many people. But you know, for me, being a social person that I am, I really needed a day like this, just kind of decompress a little bit, and it's been amazing. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that interaction. And just a quick recap: we just got done installing the reef brights, and I really, really like how they look. Now I had my doubts on how bright these can be. Um, they don't have any lens on them and yes they because they don't have any lens I know that they'll have a good spread but I didn't think they'll punch that far and you can see from behind me right there in the tank the distance between the tank and the actual water is actually pretty high so I was I had my doubts but I turned off my radions completely and I turned on the the new X uh, series and this is the first one in the United States by the way six that's 60 inches long and it punched pretty deep and I was surprised how bright everything was. I don't have the actual par value on this yet. I haven't had a chance to do it, but that will come later on on, on a separate video where I do some thorough uh, review on this unit. So please keep an eye on that one. But meanwhile, I like how everything looked. Everything just looks good together with the Radeon. It looks like it was built for it. It actually goes on with the uh, Radeon rails. It fits on there like a glove, it fits perfectly. The black anodized uh, aluminum actually matches very well. Everything looks sleek, compact, and I really like how they look together. 
That's my initial impression. Now, second thing, the Harry's fan didn't work out as, as well as I wanted to. It's not a fault of Harry's, but it was from my miscalculation. And I didn't think of the fact that with the DD jump guard, there will be a small gap between where the fan and the, the screen top uh, will, will be. And that's just enough space for a Rast to jump, and I'm not willing to take that chance. So I reached out to Harry and he already came up with different ideas on how to fix this and it's actually, I think it's going to work out even better. It's going to be more efficient in cooling the, from his new design and it's, I think in my opinion, I think it's going to look even better. So I'm really looking forward to how it's going to work out uh, for the better in the future. I'm just <laughs> excited for Harry to work on this magic to get it in my hands and that will come later on down the road. Now, also, the huge part of the day was visiting Julian with his aquaculture fish. Huge, huge, huge thanks to Mark Vera, as well as Kelvin Krog of SA Farms in Indonesia. These fish are just amazing. Uh, you know, I say this again and again, aquaculture and captive breeding is the future, or my good friend Chet Clayton says, aquaculture is now. But I agree. Whenever there's a chance to purchase a captive bred species, I usually go for it. Even if these few dollars are more expensive, there are so much more pros that you could get from this. For example, if it's dependent, depends on how these fish are kept in a local fish store. If they're kept separately, a lot of times these are pest free because they're raised in a very biosecured environment. So there is no, you know, egg, velvet or brook or anything like that that you have to worry about. For the most cases, depends on, you have to know where you're getting from, of course. And these are ready to eat at all times. These are raised, you know, these are raised by people from larvae stage. So they're they're used to humans. They'll come to you for food, beg for food. They won't shy away for like you know a lot of the the marine, the wild caught you know counter counterparts. So those are the huge plus parts for me. And just the fact that I am able to support the amazing work of these breeders and have them continue be a part of. A support that will drive them to be more innovative towards our hobby, be more sustainable down the road for our hobby. I I take pride in that and in, in able, being able to support that and I urge people to do the same to, so that we support these people and, and their amazing work so they could captivate breed more and more different species of fish down the road and it is something that we should do and we should support and that we should take great pride in. Well, all right guys, this is for me today. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Thanks for watching once again, and I'll catch you on another video. Have a great day guys, and happy reefing. So we just saw that. Huh? Emma, what, what do you want to ask me? Can we go to Scarlet, Daddy? <laughs> so you want to go to Scarlet's? Uh -huh. Why do you want to go to Scarlet's? Because my friend's name is Scarlet and I might find her there. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha.